Among other things, I'm an extreme overclocker, and cooling is something I take very seriously, especially now that all CPU and GPU manufacturers to push the silicon to the limit, they are leveraging the boost technology every generation more, especially now with the new Ryzen. And to show you how the boost works, I have a cool experiment for you, we'll get to that in a minute. But the topic of this video is about air cooling, so I contacted Gnotua and asked them for a sample of this NHU12A, which seems to be able to deliver great results. And since uh, everybody have a good opinion about this cooler, I had to test it myself. You know what I like about air coolers? They are extremely resilient. Take a look at this. This is one of the first models made by Noctua, more than 11 years ago. And, well, it's still working perfectly. I recently bought an adapter to be able to use it in the latest motherboard. I used this cooler with the 9900X and the 2700X and it works perfectly with the latest generation 8 cores. And another thing that is very important about air cooler is that uh, if for any reason the fan fails, you still have a first degree of cooling and you may be able to run your system until you replace the fan. To show you how the boost works, I have a Ryzen 7 2700X that I'm going to use to run Blender Benchmark, so a heavy rendering benchmark that uses every core possible and I'm going to make it overheat and then with liquid nitrogen I'm going to cool it down so you can see the effect of the temperature and the frequency. So you will see that the lower the temperature will get the higher frequency boost the CPU is able to maintain. As you can see we are at 84 degrees and the CPU which is very smart to be able to keep the thermos at 84 degrees is reducing the frequency so now we are actually throttling so the system performance are very reduced we have what 2800 megahertz so we are way below the baseline clock so now i'm going to use the liquid nitrogen to cool a bit the cpu so you can see when the temperature goes down the frequency will rise Take a look at the graph here and you will see the frequency is now at 3500 MHz and raising. Slowly the frequency is rising, we are still at 84 degrees. And now we are getting past the baseline frequency, still 84 degrees. Check as well the voltage, it's slightly rising. Because when the CPU sense that we have cooling, we have enough cooling to be able to, to push the frequency, it does everything by himself, rising the performance. We are still 84 degrees, but at least we are more or less at 4 gigahertz. Now you can see that the temperature is slowly going down. As well keep in mind that we are running a benchmark that is very heavy, so every core is stressed at 100%. Now this is an important step, if you can see the graph we are at 64 degrees and now we are more or less at 4.1 gigahertz. This is more or less the target that we are going to hit with a custom loop, around 64, 65, 66 degrees and we can sustain 4.1 gigahertz, but let's cool it down a bit more. Fifty nine, fifty eight. Check how the temperature is related to the frequency that is going up. We 
we are almost at 4.2 GHz. So basically the CPU is overclocking itself. This is a very nice thing that AMD did with the Ryzen and you will see with the new Ryzen is even more. 4200 MHz, so 4.2 GHz and 46 degrees. But let's push it more. So now we are at 30 degrees and we are 4.3 gigahertz and slowly we are going to approach the maximum boost clock. So now that the temp is around 22 degrees we are at the maximum boost clock. All core under stress. This is an unreal situation I will not ever see something like this with a normal cooling. Even a big custom loop you cannot maintain 22-25 degrees under load. But just to show you that if the CPU sense the thermal capability to push for more, the CPU, you can, as you can see, it raises the voltage and it pushes the clock to the maximum design, which is 4.35. Now that you saw how important is the cooling with modern CPUs, Let's get to know our guest. One thing that I really like about Noctua is everything is designed with exceptional quality, even the package. Take a look at this. We have a little box with accessories. So here we have some cable that I'm going to show you something very interesting later. The Intel mount with the back plate and the AM4 mount. Another important thing about the AM4 mount is that you don't need to replace the back plate. So virtually you can replace the stock cooler with this one without taking off the motherboard of your chassis. And then we have a screwdriver so you can install your new CPU cooler without the need of external tools. Here we have thermal paste a Y adapter and this one. These are called low noise adapter. This is very important and after you see all the results you will understand why this is very important. I think this is the most important accessory of this cooler. And here we have the cooler itself. Two fans. And our cooler. The surface is perfectly flat. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a mirror. Heat pipes. And another important feature, if you notice on this side, you have the space to fit in a socket and the fan will just stay slightly below the memory space. So even if you have a high high height memory kit, this will fit nicely, at least with most of the motherboards. Make sure that you check the flow where the air is gonna go, in this case on this side, so check the arrow, there are small little arrow here. And now the cooler is mounted and good to go. For the benchmark you are going to see in this video, I use the AMD stock cooler, uh, Antec C400 and the EVGA CLC240, which is a very nice AO cooler. The measurements you are going to see are made 
with these professional DB meters, that is ISO certified and factory calibrated. The first test is made with all the coolers with a manual settings of the fan to be able to stay at 40 dB. The custom loop is an EK with a 360 radiator XL and free Noctua fans. As you can see, it's the best performer with 1 hour and 6 minute 31 seconds of rendering time. This test is very long, that's why I use it to test the cooling. So it's 1 hour long of rendering with the CPU at 100%. At the second position, we have uh, the EVGA CLC240, a very nice all-in-one cooler, and it was only 30 seconds lower than the custom loop. In third position, we have our guest, the Noctua NH-U12A, with a maximum temp during the benchmark at 80 degrees, and only 1 minute and 15 seconds slower than the custom loop. Then we have the Antec C400 with a maximum temp of 84 degrees and 1 minute 39 seconds lower than the custom loop. Finally, we have the AMD stock cooler, which it doesn't really shine because we have an 86 degrees of maximum temp. As you have seen in the liquid nitrogen test before, 86 degrees, the clock was heavily reduced and we have a delay of 2 minutes and 10 seconds in comparison with the custom loop. Now you can see more tests like the custom loop at 100% doesn't really gain much we are talking about a gain of 2 seconds rendering over 1 hour and 6 minutes so it doesn't really make sense to push too much the fans it's already cooling the system quite well then we have our EVGA CLC240 that uh, have a 7 second difference from the custom loop but taking in consideration that we are at 56.5 decibel, is a lot of noise. And then the same cooler, the EVGA CLC240, is only 32 seconds away from the custom loop if we fix the fan at 40 dB. Then if we fix the fan at 40% in the custom loop, we have a very low noise and only 52 seconds lower than the custom loop at 100%. To follow, we have the Antec C400, which is a budget air cooler, but is a heat pipe cooler. And with the fan at 100%, we was able to maintain only one minute and 15 seconds slower than the custom loop. To keep in mind, 44.8 decibel. And then we have our Noctua. Interesting thing is to be able to maintain the same level of performance, we didn't need to push the fan at 90%. In fact, only at 60%, we was able to have the maximum efficiency out of this cooler. And 35.7 decibels, measured at 50 centimeters away in a, an open bench, is really low. At least to my ear, everything below 38 decibels when I measured the, the cooler was barely audible. Then again, we have the Antec C400 with a fixed uh, 40 dB fan we are only 1 minute and 41 seconds away from the custom loop. And then at the end we have the stock cooler, the AMD stock cooler, which uh, when it's set to high speed and maximum fan speed, we are approaching 50 decibels to be able to have a 2 minutes delay from the custom loop. And then if we set the speed to be able to stay at 40 dB, so with an acceptable level of noise, we have 4 minutes of delay against the custom loop. But one thing that I didn't like about using a linear scale when I show you the decibel is because the perception of the decibel is not linear at all. If I have to show you how really feels the noise in your ears, the result will be something like this. Keep in mind that more or less every six decibel, the perception of the sound gets doubled so from 40 to 46 dB, the perception of the sound in your ear is doubled. So take a look at the EVGL CLC when we push the fan at 100%. The perception of the noise is seven times louder. And on the contrary, when we have the Noctua fixed at 60%, the perception of the noise at your ear is like half. So Noctua at 90% of so 40 dB 
when we put it at 60%, you will hear half the noise. And that's amazing because we have the same result at 90% or at 60%, but the noise is cut in half. Another thing that I discovered in this test is if you leave the stock cooler to ramp up at 100%, at the end, to have a, a decent performance, you will hear a lot of noise. So 40 dB is set as our standard, so factor one. The AMD stock cooler, let it alone, so to ramp up at 100%, you will hear 3.3 times the sound. And if you're a content creator or someone that have to work with a CPU under stress, 50 decibel is a lot. The last test I did was checking the scaling related to the RPM of the Noctua fan, the cooling power and the noise level. As you can see, even at 100%, this cooler was at maximum at 42 dB, which can be considered very quiet. The most important aspect of this cooler is that we don't need to push the fan at 100%, we just need to push the fan at 60% to have the maximum efficiency. In fact, at 35.7, the noise level is barely inaudible. Another interesting fact is that when I set the fan at 20%, so we can say that I was basically fanless, we had enough score to be able to perform better than the AMD stock cooler fixed at 40 decibels. And here we came back at the point at the beginning of this video where I tell you why I love the air cooler because even if the fan fails as you can see we can maintain a decent level of performance and clearly we are not going to overheat the system or damaging the system. Here you can see the difference between the custom loop, the Noctua and the stock cooler at 100%. It's pretty clear how a good cooler can influence the maximum boost and the sustained boost frequency. As you can see here in this zone, when there's a flat line, the frequency is reduced and we are below 3.9 gigahertz. If you remember that during the unboxing, I told you about the low noise adapter. Well, this is very important because with this plugged in between the fan and the motherboard, you will get around 1700 RPM. So, translated in decibel, around 38 decibel. The cooler, if the system is pushing the fan at 100%, the new 100% will be 1700 RPM, so 38 decibel. Uh, to my ear, in that test bench at 60, 70 centimeters, I wasn't able to hear anything. So, if you put this in a fan with a low noise adapter, you will have a cooler that is capable of cooling even the latest generation 8 cores in total silence. I know that this cooler was great, but after testing it myself, I saw that it is even better than my expectation. I would like to keep creating content with it, the new Ryzen, the 1900K, and probably World of Warcraft and measuring the noise level and the performance during a gameplay. So I would like to thank Noctua for providing me the sample and make this review possible for you. Now you know what to do. Hit the like button if you like the content and the video, leave a comment in the comment section and if you want to have a chat about it, join my Discord server. And now, as always, see you in the next one.